on today's show what can we learn from game four that brings us into game five at home for the dallas mavericks against the utah jazz and our boy luka Doncic reveals the signature shoe we'll break that all down on today's like i'm i'm luka Doncic, and this is locked on mavericks but hey, 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 dallas mavericks are nba champions I don't believe you shouldn't be here. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. They're the best way you can help us right now. Subscribe and comment below. Comment below. Do you like Lucas shoes? Do you not like Lucas shoes? Why or why not? Let us know in the comments. What do you think about Lucas' new signature shoe? And joining me, as always, my co-host, writer, and contributor at Mavs.com, the sneaker head hoodlum, the one more thing king. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? <laughs> well, happy Monday. A mm. lot of you guys are probably going to work because you know what and, and it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good night it's game five happy tonight. game five day let's go happy game five day at home in dallas late tip tonight 8 30 we'll talk more about the series and some stuff uh in the next uh what i don't know 20 minutes 10 minutes <laughs> uh however however long we go today but <laughs> happy for luka Doncic though he gets his signature shoe. We've been talking about it for a long time of like, hey, when's he going to get it? Obviously, Zion got it, you know, first with, with Jordan and this kind of new crop of Jordan brand athletes. And I just, I, I loved his his Instagram story today. He said, dream come true, you know, Seriously. ever since a kid. And I think we lose the the personal side of this sometime because he's such a superstar and one of the faces of the NBA at such a young age, but this is the dream, right? To have your own signature shoe, not just for any brand out there. We're talking about for Jordan brand. Like this is huge for him. Is that a big deal? Explain to people why that's a big deal. I know we've done this before when Luca, it was announced that Luca was going to get a signature shoe, but why is a signature shoe special? Like why is that different than some of the other shoes we've seen where this guy gets his own version of a different shoe or something like that? Yeah, it's just, you know, you look at Nike. Back when I used to work for Nike, we we would debate, oh, who's going to be the next like signature athlete? And because there's just there's just a handful. You know of who them. else did that when you were an employee at Nike? Who? <laughs> Nico Harrison, the, <laughs> the Mavs president of basketball operations was doing that same thing at Nike when you were. Yeah, so like you, <laughs> you know, you have Kobe obviously and LeBron and and KD. And I remember when they, they added Paul George and, you know, his basketball shoe came out and it was a little cheaper and it was a good price point for a lot of people. And it's like, oh, this is cool. Then Kyrie and Kyrie's were super popular, especially with kids. And but that's about it at that point. And you look at the Jordan brand side and, you know, looking at, you know, Westbrook, you know, led the way there. Obviously, Chris Paul, Carmelo, you know, and that wave is kind of like moving on, right? Like they're, they're almost out of the league and it's just, you don't, you look at brands, obviously some smaller brands, like they'll, they're, they'll hand out signature shoes left and right. To but, stars like Kyle Kuzma. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but when you look at Jordan brand, you look at, you know, Nike, you look at, um, you know, Adidas has, you know, a Dame and Harden. And uh, I think Trey has his own and Under Armour has a couple, you know, the Embiid and, and Curry, but it, it's a big deal. And for Jordan, for Jordan brand specifically, it's like, all right, Zion got his, which is kind of wild because he hadn't really done anything. And you know, the next people in line was Luca and probably Jason Tatum coming up in the near future too. So big time, big time for Luca. And it drops on TikTok. <laughs> you know, it, we got the release date, you know, a while back, June 30th. We talked about it this year, but it drops on TikTok, both in Luca's TikTok, the Mavs TikTok. And I'm like, you know, I, I'm I follow Nike's press releases pretty pretty close, and I hadn't got anything, hadn't seen anything from Jordan Brand. I was like, mm, all right, this is interesting that they're just dropping it on TikTok. But cool day for Luca. It was to me, it seemed like a leak. It seemed like the Mavs leaked it, right? Like it, like it was almost premature because there was the the video was like all these different tweets from people that were like, release the signature shoe. Where's Luca's signature shoe? And then finally they're like, all right, here it is. And then they gave the, they post this picture of like this sideways like angle of the shoe and it's weird because it's looking like from the bot like the sole instead of from the top or the front or something like that it's just this it was, this, it was kind of strange it was almost like 
they weren't supposed to, but it was released. Then later that day, Jordan Brand released the actual press release. We got actual real pictures of it and everything. Uh, what's your thoughts on it? We'll throw up a picture right here on uh, on the podcast, but what's your thoughts on it? I'll, I'll try to explain it best I can for the audio people. If, if you're listening on podcasts, you've probably already seen it, but it has the, you know, it, it's a black shoe with the uh, white kind of, you know, rubber around the soles with blue accents here and there you have the the speckled black like paint splatter stuff that you see on all the like custom shoes people make uh and then it has like this you know back and forth zigzag like snake looking um texture on the top of it the tongue is like this i don't know remember those like journals we used to have in the in, like when we were kids where you push the or you <laughs> you push the plastic and it, like changes all space sparkly colors and it like changes around it's like a purple and green <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff on the shoe what do you think about it yeah it's kind of like a holographic you know tongue there about the only predictions i had for it going into it was like obviously his logo is going to be on it but it was going to be a low top and you know this isn't a this isn't a high top shoe you see how much he loved we're getting really technical in the shoes here in a second. So if you don't <laughs> care about shoes, but you know how much he loves put chapters know, in, this. In, in the, you know, the low tops, he loves playing in those elements. And, you know, this, this looks like a similar vibe to that. So one of the small things on the inside, it has Latin has this uh, kind of green letters on the inside of the shoe of this uh, saying. And obviously I can't, uh, I'm not going to pronounce this right, but it basically says non diestas non exeris. Um, but basically it says it means don't give up, um, never surrender. So, or never give up, uh, never surrender on that. So I thought that was a cool, I, I love seeing signature shoes and seeing all the like little details, personal when I, touches. When I worked at Nike, that was one of the cool things when like a new KD would come out, we'd get like trained on it and we'd see like the, the bottom of the shoe was like a map of like his like hometown. It's like, you would never even know that if you didn't just like really look into the shoe. So I haven't seen any of the like super big details of the shoe by Luca, but I thought there was something, you know, obviously I, I love looking at some of the, the technology of the shoe. Well, um, I love seeing some of the technology, <laughs> Uh, of the shoe and it has this new ISO plate uh, kind of technology in it. And it's kind of just for the midfoot. So it, it's, and it's supposed to like wrap the, I mean, yeah, it's supposed to wrap the, uh, wrap the midfoot to help the front and back movement. It's this brand new stuff. It has this new, you know, Jordan um, 23 foam. Uh, it's a plate that's in the sole, like at the, on the bottom or it's on the sides. Yeah. So I'll just read from the, uh, from the Nike website here. It says the isoplate foot frame wraps up the lateral forefoot to keep players contained over the footbed, helping secure the foot when going from front to back. What am I, a, pod a podiatrist? How am I supposed <laughs> to know all these foot terms? You gotta, you gotta know these things, I guess um, so. <laughs> but no, it has the uh, flight wire cables on the side. It's just, uh, you know, obviously Luca played in, this is something that if we had truth serum, it just feels weird going back to the whole like rollout of this. It I wonder if there was some type of misstep of either Luca planned to wear them and there was like a miscommunication of it, and which he did wear them in the game the other day. And mm -hmm. it was a short, I mean, it was very quick after the TikTok, you know, drop of the shoe. I mean, how what was it, an hour or so later, then all the pictures started coming out. I wonder if there was some type of rollout and either some people got some pictures of him or he warmed up in him or something happened to like speed it up super quick because a signature shoe is such a big deal that, you know, normally you see some like hype and stuff around it. But I think I personally, whatever Luca would have rolled out there as, as the Luca one, I'm going to buy it. Okay. That, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a no brainer. And Real quick, from what you were saying earlier, what's the difference between the signature shoe and like a PE? You can wear like a, the difference is a lot of players wear the Jordan 35s and but then you can like slap your logo on it. Like what Jason Tatum's doing right now, he has there's all these different colorways and they can be custom to like what you want, the, the colorways, but then you just have your logo on it. It's what Luca's been doing with the elements and Jordan 35s and all this stuff. The whole different part of this is this is the actual Luca one. This we've seen different, like, you know, the, there was a, some Jordan ones that came out a while back. That was like Luca themed. Then there was the cosmics. Then there was, you know, um, Luca PEs. That one you this, have behind you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, these are, uh, these are Luca PEs. So this, this shoe is the actual Luca one. So I'm really curious what the different colorways are going to look like. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, but I love this first shoe. I, I love it. And, um, 
any black shoe i i love black on shoes is the best but uh for me but anyway gray shoe i'm excited for it i'm excited to uh snag some this summer let us know what you think in the comments below do you like the shoe are you gonna buy the shoe what don't you like about the shoe let us know in the comments below coming up Big questions for game four. What big questions were we left with in Luca's return game to the playoffs? And coming up, what can and should we expect in game five and beyond? We'll talk about all that and more coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Athletic Greens. It's the best thing you can do for your body in 60 seconds or less. AG1 is the product. Isaac's got the water bottle right there. Uh, you can put some AG1 powder in that. Shake it up. Take it in the morning. That's all it is. Boom. All of a sudden, you have just taken 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. It's a special blend that supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, focus, and aging. I'm a millennial. I know a lot of you listening are millennials. All of us, all of us need to work on all of those things. Gut health. <laughs> Mm. nervous system immune system energy recovery focus and aging <laughs> some of us are getting into our 30s mid 30s now some of us are getting into we can work on all that stuff and ag1 can help you with that and it's simple right now reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition it's just one scoop of uh one scoop of ag1 and a cup of water every day that's it no need for a million different pills and supplements and all that kind of stuff the gummy vitamins stop taking the flintstone vitamins it's time to upgrade to AG1. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a one-year free su supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash NBA network. Again, athleticgreens.com slash NBA network. Take ownership of your health, athleticgreens.com slash NBA network. All right, Isaac Harris. Thanks for making Lockdown Maps your first listen for your next listen. Check out the Lockdown Now podcast, nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from your local experts, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Isaac, what questions do we have from game four? The Mavericks lose that game. Luka does return. He looks good in his return, but the Mavericks fall short. And uh, I'm just going to start with it. Um, what? How, who can we blame for the last 40 seconds? Who do you think deserves the biggest the biggest blame? If we're going to make a blame pie, we're going to take a circle and we're going to say, all right, 50% goes to kid, 50% goes to Luca. Like whatever, decide, whatever we carve this up, who gets the blame for the last 40 seconds? Because if you guys remember, I know some, I know, <laughs> I know you listening probably blocked it out of your brain by now. 40 seconds to go. Luka Doncic hits a should have been dagger three. The Mavs go up by four at that point. On the other end, Donovan Mitchell misses a shot, gets an offensive rebound. Should have been called for an offensive foul. That was in the last two-minute report. But in his own rebound, he gets fouled, hits the end one, gets the basket. So that's a three-point play. Plus, they get enough time for the two-for-one two possession. On the other end of the floor, Dwight misses his two free throws. Then the Mitchell to Gobert alley-oop to win the game, basically, at that point. The inbound... Um, you know, goes over to Dinwiddie. He misses the shot that could have won the game. And that was that was the, the ending sequence. Who do you think gets the most blame for the Mavs loss in that last 40 seconds? LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> Doncic, saucy! Uh, Le LeBron's tweet, he, he, he also tweeted tonight about the point God during Dallas the game. Dallas is going to get a seat at the table. Uh, during, the, during the Phoenix New Orleans game, and Phoenix lost. So... Has he did he tweet about Chris Paul last night? With the, he, he did. I just said he he? He, tweet, he tweeted point God <laughs> and uh, about the point God. So um, I think this would be the order for me. If he tweeted I had, about, no, he tweeted about Kyrie too. That's what I thought you were talking about at first. He tweeted about Kyrie a lot. He said he should have been top 75. And then now they're down 03. Yeah. Yeah. I need him to tweet about Gobert tomorrow night. <laughs> tonight. So uh, y'all hating on Gobert. I promise. I believe that he should have been one of the, he, I should have picked him higher in the all-star voting. <laughs> Um, I, I think <laughs> if I had to hand out, you know, slices of the blame pie, I think I would go in this order. I think I would do uh, Jason Kidd, Dwight Powell, then Luca. And you ranked them. I, I did. I teared them <laughs> off. <laughs> I said, give them a percentage. And you said, no, I'll put them in order. Okay. Um, I'll do. Um, <laughs> That's okay. No, just keep going. Okay. So that, gonna, the math doesn't gonna, matter on this. Not show. to break down the percentages now. No. Uh, because there was there was just a couple of things of the you know we talked about on yesterday's pod the decision not to advance the ball, you know you, just bringing the ball like what was the play called that did you just when he was when he 
like you look at the stats behind after timeout, the plays coming out of that. He's one of the best in the league of drawing up plays for that. And that they elected really not to really do that and just like, hey, let's just slowly bring up the you know the ball in that. But also, I'll even take it a, a possession before that. Before Luca hits the three to go up by four, mm-hmm. and the Jazz call timeout. Luca's hollering and celebrating everything. We know that Luca's not a hundred percent right, and Dallas has timeouts because they called it whenever they didn't advance the ball. Why not go off offense defense there? Take Luca out of the mm. game, especially if he's not 100, percent and especially if they've been targeting def- on defense. They had, and, and that you have the timeout that you're probably going to call either way. Then you can put him back in the game whenever you get the ball next. Take him out. But they targeted him. Donovan Mitchell goes in. He gets the offensive foul in Dwight. Then he gets the offensive board, and, and Luca fouls him, and he gets the end one and all of that. So there's just a couple possessions there. I would probably went offense defense. I would have called, I would have advanced the ball and actually called a play in that. I think they focused a little bit too much on we got to get the last shot of the game instead of getting a good shot. And you know, with that last 11 seconds there. So I blame kid first, obviously the Dwight Powell missed free throws and, you know, me, kind of him and Dorian, whoever's fault you want to say on that of messing up the, the oop to go bear. I think I would do the same thing. Jason, Jason kid with the not advancing ball. The other thing about advancing the ball is they didn't need a three. They needed a two. They just yeah. needed a two in that, in that situation. A two wins it or the Mavs were in the bonus. They could have gotten fouled and yeah. could have gone to the line. And then all of a sudden, you could hit one and go to overtime or hit two and win the game. So there's a lot of different options. And for them to just kind of fall into that three again. And some people were saying, well, he just chucked the ball over to Dinwiddie. It wasn't a play. That looked exactly like the play against the Celtics when Dinwiddie hit the, the shot and got the, you know, the game winner. So I, I tend to think that it was a design play that that's how they set I, it up. I, I don't know. Where are you on that? I don't know. I, I It just, it felt it the like the exact same just, thing. But but they were just spread out and like the, they were in their shooting spots. So then they just brought the double and Luca just read it. So they brought the double off, you know, to where Dinwiddie was the guy. So same thing as against I mean, Celtics. Yeah. So I just don't know how much of a play it is for them to to correctly guess. Oh, this is the defender they're going to bring up on me to double. Yeah, Luca probably gets the option, right? He he probably gets the yeah. option of who he's going to throw to. But uh, but yeah, that last forty seconds is going to haunt. It's going to haunt some Mavs fans. But I wanted to know who. Who to blame? <laughs> yeah, and you know, I, Luca's first game back. You don't want to put a ton of blame on him, but how much would they? You know, yeah. Anyway, let's leave that. That at that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> another question: How big of a factor were the refs? Because we did say the last two minute report did come out. I know you listening. I know you love the last two minute report. Everyone just loves the last two minute report. Um, one of the correct. One of the the only incorrect call was Donovan Mitchell, that last play, 33 seconds left. He extends the arm towards Dwight Powell, makes contact. It specifically says in the last two-minute report, Mitchell extends his arm towards Powell and makes contact with his face, mm. which which affects his ability to contest the play at the basket. Oh, you think? You think if it... Shocker. And so, and so that was the only incorrect call that it, that should have been called. Instead, it was a foul on Dwight Powell. Dwight Powell fouls him with his face. And then Mitchell goes to the line, hits the hits the shot and the end one. If that if that call goes well, different, Dwight didn't. They didn't call a foul on Dwight. He oh, got sorry. the offensive rebound. Then Luca fouled him. But Luca fouled him. Sorry, you're right. Uh, if that play goes differently, Luca doesn't get the foul, and it's a, instead an offensive foul on. Uh, on and then all of a sudden, it's ninety nine ninety five with thirty seconds left, and Mavs have the ball. Yeah, well, it's huge. I mean, yeah, you don't want to say that's the game, but it's huge. So how much of a factor were the actual refs? I've also seen a lot today that, you know, David Locke even poked fun at me when we were on WFAA about, well, everyone's all Mavs fans and people are talking about the refs when they hacked Gobert so much and they forced a bunch of free throws. Like, of course, that's what's going to happen. If you hack Gobert so much, he takes 18 free throws. How much of a factor do you think the refs actually were? Well, well, that's why on yesterday's spot, I wasn't too wrapped up into the, the total free throw count for Utah because Dallas kind of wanted it, right? Like they, yeah. they, they welcomed Rudy in a sense of, Hey, Rudy can catch this ball. And like, we'll just hack the crap out of him. And it felt like, and it was working, right? I mean, he missed, he airballed a free throw and they all freaked out and it was like <laughs> hilarious. We were laughing about it. So I don't, I don't care as much about the free throw count because Dallas kind of wa- like, I don't want to say wanted it, but they kind of welcomed it there with Rudy. It was just that 
it was the lack of calls for Dallas at the end. They could have played better defense. It's not the it's not the game. It's not the end all tell all for why Dallas lost. It was because of the refs, but they definitely had some big plays that didn't go their way. That you know, it was a little little home cooking Dwayne Wade ish. So <laughs> you can't can't deny it. Speaking of Dwayne Wade, he had an incredible tweet the other day. Oh, it's, God. Here we go. I mean, I'm sorry to be reading this on here, mm. but uh, somebody tweeted at him about how he was shooting after game three in Utah. Like he's out on the court shooting around and stuff. And uh, he commented, I wanted to hoop yesterday for the first time since I retired. Down 2 1 makes you feel alive. Your hands are sweaty. Your heart is beating. Mom's spaghetti at the different pace. My mind is at peace because being down and counted out is where I'm most comfortable. I may have added no, in no. a couple of my own words there, but come on. I, but I, I, I don't give a crap about anything he tweets. Royce O'Neill, I'm, I'm fat. I, I don't understand how this wasn't even like reviewed after the game the other day. Like, I know we've already had a game since then, but it was just wild that he didn't even get fined for it. Like, let, a, let alone they, like any suspension or anything, the cheap shots on Brunson that game. In game three. But like, it wasn't even talked about since. It wasn't even like mentioned that the league reviewed Roy Sildale and they decided not to find it. Like, it wasn't even talked about. I thought he would at least, like, if you gave me betting odds, bet online, you know, <laughs> you know like, let's do this. Like, I would have put money down that he would have at least gotten fined and he got nothing for that. I, I don't know. That, that was surprising to me. That was surprising. What else is surprising is the Mavericks have a couple more games now and they have Luca back. And now all of a sudden the, is the pressure on the Mavs. We'll talk about yeah. that and more big questions for game five and beyond coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about built bar. It's a protein bar. Tastes like a candy bar. They're delicious. They're great. Go check them out right now. The peanut butter was back. They sell out. They sell out so fast. You got to go get them while they're hot. Mint brownie is a solid flavor. It's always there. Peanut butter brownie is a solid flavor. That's always there. Raspberry cherry bar. See, I like those. Coconut, coconut almond. Cookies and cream. People love that one. Churro puff. Love that flavor. Really, really good flavor. Churro puff. Check them out. Uh, for example, if you look at the churro puff, 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, 6 grams of sugar, in a bar covered in 100% chocolate with marshmallow in the middle. It's built bar. They're great. They're delicious. We love them. We eat them all the time. Isaac. You got a go-to Bilt Bar flavor? Well, it could work in a brownie chunk, but... It's got to come, it's gotta come back sometime. It's gotta yeah, come it's got to come back at some point, but I, I like the Cherry Barcia. That was an underrated one. It's just a little just a little taste in there. So go check it out, Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your entire order. That's LOCKED15, 15% off your entire order at Built.com. All right, Isaac Harris, let's look forward now. We talked about Lucas Shue. We talked about game four. Let's look forward and talk about game five that's Monday night and beyond in this series. Um, one of my first questions is, should and can we expect anything from Dinwiddie? Should we be expecting anything from Spencer Dinwiddie in this series? Because now we're a couple games into this, and I'm starting to suspect that we're not going to get the, oh, Spencer finally went off, and we finally got the Spencer Dinwiddie game. No, I think it's okay to expect something from him. I, I I think we should, right? I mean, I don't think here here's where I think it gets a little, you know, a little confusing is oh, it's it's KP for Dinwiddie. So we should have the same expectations because KP was the second star and made 30 something million. And so now now it's Dinwiddie. And it's like, no, it's not really that. Like there's a reason why he makes 18 million dollars. And it's you know, the first season he's playing off the ACL and all that stuff. So He's still a good player. I think we should still have expectations, but we shouldn't set him so high to be the second star 35 a game type. And I'll clarify my question. A lot of people are asking, you know, well, is Dinwiddie ever going to have a good game? I'm just going to say he's had, he had 22 points in game one, eight assists. He had 17 points and six assists in game two with two steals. He had 20 points and six assists in game three. So like he's had, he's put up some numbers here. Now it hasn't been super efficient, but I'm waiting for the, when should we expect a game from Dinwiddie? Like a 30 mm. point, 35 point game that makes me wear the felt goatee on my, on my face on the podcast. One of those type of games. And for me, I'm, I'm kind of done expecting it, especially with Luca back, right? Like the opportunity for it now is lessened for, for Dinwiddie. And so now I'm hoping that Dinwiddie just gets a couple more opportunities to be more aggressive, to get more space. I'm hoping that some of the times when 
you know, I'm sure Kid will play the Luka Dinwiddie lineups again, like we saw in game four without Brunson. And I'm hoping that Luka switches onto Gobert, switches onto Mitchell's, or switches onto Whiteside somebody. And then he swings it over to Dinwiddie and that Dinwiddie can actually get some some driving lanes. I'm hoping he can be that guy. And that's how they counter some of these looks. Uh, and so I'm hoping for some more efficient games from Dinwiddie. I'm hoping that he hits a couple threes here because he has not shot the ball well from three at all in this series. He is 18% from three in this series. He's I'm I'm hoping that he has a breakout game with three or four threes, but I'm I'm I think I'm done expecting the 30, 35 point game to to pop up in one of these. I want to see the three guards together more. That was something I was a little surprised about in, in the last game. And hopefully we get a little bit more of it uh, here in game five, because, you know, especially you look at the the pressure that, you know, Bojan was picking up guys full court, you know, and whenever they're, that's where Dallas gets so hard to defend. If, you know, if they're not going to, if they're going to bring Rudy out or if they go, if they go small, which looks like they're not, and they're daring these guys to go more ISO stuff, then, let these guys cook like you then you have three guys out there that can that can get to the rim that can create their own shot and one of my biggest things that i'm watching for game five is in the fourth quarter can we please target donovan mitchell again like that's yeah. that's one of the things that i i it was know key the, in game three it was huge in game three and i get that luca's out there and it turned into luca getting the mismatch on luke on rudy which he's comfortable with i'm fine with that too but if they were tar- like use the same game plan on that and just switch out Luca for Brunson and like Luca target Donovan Mitchell in that. So that that's, I want them. I think there was a stat flying around that, you know, they, they only went at him like once or twice in the fourth. And it's like, what, you know, that, that was what worked, uh, you know, in the previous game. So I want to see that more, especially in the fourth quarter. Another thing that I'm I'm looking out for, can Maxi stay out of foul trouble? This is going to yeah. be I mean this is almost the the little stat that people outside of people that watch Dallas every game won't talk about and won't won't say. He is so important for that lineup. The spread the floor, I mean all the threes that he hit in the first couple of games that the Mavs won well, we're so massive spreading the floor and his defense. The difference between him, Powell and and Davis Bertans is just I mean they're all three completely different players even though they're about the same they're about the same height. Um, Maxi Kleba at home, three fouls in game one, 24 minutes, two fouls in game two, 32 minutes, five fouls in game three, 22 minutes, six fouls fouled out in game four in just 18 minutes of play. Mm. Do you think the home and away affects that at all? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's wild how important he is to this team. Uh, yeah. I think there's probably a lot of Mavs fans that, gave Max a lot of heck earlier in the season that after the first, you know, few games there were, were eating their words a little bit on, on Maxi and just him hitting all those threes and him being out, how much that does affect this team of like, Oh crap. Like you can't be in foul trouble, bro. Like no, we, we need you out there. So yeah, I, he can't be in foul trouble. Is this point blank? They got to keep him out there. I don't know what you do. I don't know how you can try to prevent that. Some of his decision-making on his part, I got one for you. I got a question. Does Frank, so Frank Nilekina is questionable for this game. Would you give all of Josh's minutes to Frank? No, because I think Josh's game mm. three showed that he showed that I he might. can make it. Showed that he can make an impact. You think Frank Nilekina is that much better of a shooter than Josh, and that much better it, of, a, of an individual defender that would work? I just, I mean, I, I, I would, I would give it a shot, right? Especially if Josh Green misses a few threes. I would I would give it a shot at that point. Like if Frank can knock down the outside shot, then yeah, do it. Because you're not lo- it's not like you're losing a ton defensively. Heck, Frank might be a better, you know, yeah, perimeter defender might than, be, yeah. than than Josh. So I mean, if Frank can hit the shots, then I I'm I'm at least entertaining that if I'm Jason Kidd. And I don't think I don't think Frank's that much better of a shooter than Josh Green to, to make it up for it. And I think what Josh Green does bring when he's on there is he gets some extra possessions. I mean, he he got the yeah. Mavs a bunch of extra possessions. A ton of extra possessions and the passing. I mean, he t- was tied for the team leader in assists in, in game three in that way. I think he had you know, six, six, uh, six assists yeah. in game three. Those are, are huge. The offensive rebounds, the the hustle plays, things like that. I'm not sure Nilakina brings it in the, in, the, in the same way. And Josh shot 36% from three this year, and Nilakina shot 34% from three. So, and about the same number of attempts per game. So, I'm not sure that it, I'm not sure that it matters too much. Like Nilakina has a little, maybe a little bit better overall in his career shooting from three, but it's interesting. Will he play at all? Like, will they try to throw 
him out there instead of, you know, somebody else. Um, you know, and the, the elephant in the room is Luca's health. You know, I yeah. think that that's the thing of you have this, you know, this calf strain that we know it's not a hundred percent and can, can we get how, you know, can he just stay health injury reaggravation free? <laughs> However you want to word that, of, <laughs> just, you know, can we, can he stay healthy? Can we, you know, him just coming out of the game the other day and finishing that game healthy is like, all right, whew, he didn't react. And you and I know we were watching the game together. We, you and I know that six minutes, 20 seconds into like six minutes and 20 seconds, the mark in the first quarter, the six minute and 20 seconds mark in the first quarter. They had played, I mean, what they had played six minutes at that point. Luca points at kid and says, yeah. Hey, I got to get out. Usually he plays the whole first quarter. He only played half of that quarter. And what you know asked to come out, so the fatigue factor. I wonder if that plays into effect. Uh, yeah, and that's another yeah. one for me. If you want to combo these two together, is fatigue is my, was my last question. Uh, how much does fatigue hit? Because all of a sudden now it's it's three games in five days, which is not nothing. And there's been travel in there. They've played in Utah. Now they're going to go back to Dallas. Uh, Donovan Mitchell has been awful without rest in this season. You go hmm. listen to, to David Locke with all his. You know numbers and things about you know Donovan Mitchell is incredible shooting the ball with two or more days rest with one day rest or no days rest he's been not good uh, overall so who is that who's fatigue gonna hit more Luca with the injury Mitchell with the you know fatigue that he's had all season in the weird shooting or is it Dorian and Reggie who have played the most minutes of anybody in the playoffs huh. so far and uh, who does it hit first and does it matter if they're playing you know in uh, in game five and then beyond yeah huge for Luca. Luca's got to be a little bit better defensively too. Yeah. Um, you know, if he can pick it up on that, that side and show that, you know, he he's at least his leg is capable to, you know, to where he's not getting targeted, you know, a lot defensively, especially towards the end of the game. Um, there were just a couple, a couple of those assignments. It wasn't really as much as him getting beat off the dribble than them just running, you know, picks on him and him just not getting to the other guy in time. Yeah. Bullion getting a three and him, you know, thinking a switch is going to be there, a rotation and stuff. So he's just got to, I mean, we know he's not 100%. So he's got to be better there. And you said it a while ago, the pressure now shifts. Like game four, all the pressure was on Utah at home down to one. Like if they lost that game, series is over. Now the, the pressure shifts to Dallas. It's game five. You can't lose this game going back to Utah. I mean, you can. You could, you obviously still have another game at home, but. David Locke and I went back and forth on this on WFAA today, but there can't. There, I think there is pressure on on the Mavs now. There was yeah. no, there was no pressure on the Mavs before. So now all of a sudden there is pressure, but there's yeah. still a ton what, of pressure. What, what were y'all arguing? I would argue that the the Jazz have still have more pressure on them because yeah, if, you think they have more pressure on on the Jazz in Game Five in, in the rest of the series. Oh, I'm talking about Game Five the, tonight, eight thirty. Game it's five, more, game more five. pressure on Dallas that you got to win this game at home. You can't, you don't want to go back to Utah, travel and everything with, they just got to win one game. Right. And the series is over. Right. Uh, but overall in the series, if the jazz lose the series, the team's getting blown up, right? Like if the, oh, they're getting lose blown the series, up either way though. You think so? Oh yeah. What, what if what's going what to, what's going to save them? What if this Pelicans team wins against the Suns and then the jazz have to go play the Pelicans in round the, two. If the Pelicans can beat the Suns, they can beat the Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jose Alvarado. <laughs> Steal Donovan Mitchell's lunch. I ever. love that guy, unless we have to play him. And then he's going to be annoying. <laughs> oh, I know. There you go. Big questions for Game 5 and beyond. Huge, massive game for the Dallas Mavericks. Should be a fun one. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Mavs. Peace out. Boom. Boom.